The sound of water really adds to the experience of a garden. It's soothing, cooling, and welcoming. But using water in the garden doesn't mean you've got to have an elaborate pool or a pond with a fountain, waterfall, plants, and fish. It can be very simple and still create the bubbling, flowing sound of water. I'm here at the Better Homes and Gardens Test Garden to install a small stone fountain that'll look great in any yard. It's not difficult to build, and you can make it in an afternoon. Put your fountain where it's easy to enjoy, somewhere you'll see and hear it every day, like near a patio or a deck. But avoid any low spots in your yard so that during heavy rain you don't have soil and debris washing into it. I'm putting this one here in the test garden near a bench so it'll be easy to hear and enjoy while relaxing. These are the things you'll need to construct this fountain. I'll talk about each part as I build it. You can find the list of materials on the Better Homes and Gardens website. The tools you'll need are simple, a screwdriver, pliers, a level, a shovel, and a measuring tape. The first thing you'll need is a tub or a basin to hold the water. And this can be one that's made to water livestock or one that's sold by water garden suppliers. Really any sturdy container that'll hold 30 to 50 gallons of water and is plastic will work. And this is a good size because it holds enough water where it won't require a lot of maintenance needing to be filled very often. And you'll want to bury this, leaving an inch of the rim above the ground so the soil doesn't wash in. And when you dig the hole, you'll need it to be an inch deeper and two to four inches wider than the tub. Dig the hole so the tub will be level when it's set into it. Put a one to two inch layer of builder sand in the hole to set the tub on. This will help you get it level. Remember, it's very important that the tub is level to keep the water in and other things out. Make sure the rim of the tub is about one inch above the ground. Using a two-foot square piece of plastic window screen, make a bag for the water pump to be placed into. This will serve as a crude pre-filter that doesn't need cleaning as often as the smaller intake on the water pump. Place the pump in the screen bag that you'll make by cinching up the ends of this and securing it with a plastic tie. And this pump has a 210 gallon per hour output, but anything in the 170 to 300 gallon per hour range will work just fine. And another thing worth noting here is that the cord is very long. That's important. You want it to reach an outlet so you don't have to use an extension cord. Attach a four foot long length of three quarter inch or half inch flexible tubing to the pump and secure it with a stainless steel hose clamp. Now I've added some plastic grating to the top of the tub. This is sold as animal cage grating at farm and home stores. And I've cut this piece into an oval shape that overlaps the edge of the tub. I've also cut out a window using a jigsaw and hinged it with nylon ties. Now this will give me an access port to be able to get in and service and maintain the pump. Otherwise, you'd have to take apart the entire fountain. Now it's a little extra work now, but it's going to make it a lot easier later on. Before putting the grating over the tub, I'm going to put concrete blocks in the bottom to support the grating and give it extra strength. You could also use bricks. Stack the blocks or bricks high enough so that the grate sits level on the blocks and the rim of the tub. Thread the tubing through the grating. Be sure to set the access port over the pump. Bring the electrical cord out through the grate and to the side of the tub. Add stones on top of the grate to cover it. I'm using small pieces of flagstone that are fairly irregular in shape but are rather flat. Some quarries call this shot stone. Now, these will be placed so that some water will cascade over them, then over the aggregate I'll add later. I'll stack these in a neat but balanced way and rearrange them until I get just the look I want. The tubing from the pump can be brought up between the stones in the center. The aggregates or smaller stones are placed around the base of the stack of larger stones. The accent or feature stone goes on top. I'm using an artificial stone that looks natural, but you could use an urn, a pot, or a watering can. This has a fitting in it that the tubing attaches to that'll bring the water up to the top of the stone and allow it to flow over. I'm going to run the cord under the mulch and to a nearby outlet. Now I'm ready to fill the basin with water and see how my new fountain works. Isn't this neat? Now all it needs is just the right plants around it. And I picked out some perennials that'll add color and texture without dominating the fountain. This only took a few hours to build and about $200 in materials and it can be enjoyed all summer and for seasons to come. Now, for more information on this stone fountain or to learn about other ideas that will help you modify the plan to completely change the look, see the May 2000 issue of Better Homes and Gardens magazine or check out our website.